This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Sport of Pro Wrestling podcast. I am Chris Samsa, and this is the New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 30 Night 8 Preview. G1 Climax 30 continues on Thursday from Niigata with the B-Block's fourth card of the tournament. This card is kind of like two civil wars happening at the same time with two intra-faction matches at the top of the card. Los Ingobernables de Japón leader Tetsuya Naito will battle Sonata in Sonata's hometown in the main event of the evening. The semi-main event will feature Bullet Club's two newest members, Kenta and Evil, battling as they continue to establish their role in the ever-evolving faction. Third down the card, slow starters in this year's tournament, Hiroshi Tanahashi and Yoshihashi, will each look to even their record at 500. The card with the most block points accumulated thus far in the tournament will kick off the tournament matches, with Juice Robinson taking on Toriano for the fourth G1 in a row followed by Hiroki Goto and Zack Sabre Jr.'s first match since 2018. You can find my complete statistical breakdown for every competitor in the G1 Climax at VoicesOfWrestling.com. I have interactive, sortable tables for New Japan's 2020, detailed results and statistics for all 1,495 G1 Climax matches to date, as well as a full box score for this year's tournament at sportofprowrestling.com and you can let me know what you find when you drill down some of that data by dropping me a line on twitter at the chris samsa so this event will come to us on october 1st 2020 from niigata and the start time is 6 30 jst so the same as the last two nights so 4 30 a.m chicago time 5 30 a.m on the east coast and we'll say 3.30 a.m. in Denver, because we haven't thrown out the Denver time here in a little while. You can watch live with Japanese commentary or on demand later with English commentary on NJPW World. And the best way to use NJPW World is with the NJPW EXT browser extension. NJPW EXT is the only browser extension for NJPWWorld.com, with features like synchronized viewing parties, dark mode, improved translations and layouts, custom and shared playlists, and much, much more. It takes NJPW World to the next level. Visit NJPWEXT.us today for details. So let's take a peek at the B block as we come into their fourth card of the tournament. Uh, at the top of the block, we have, of course, IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito with six points at 3-0. and And right there with him, uh, kind of a surprise, actually not even kind of a surprise, a super surprise, Toriano at six points, also 3-0 and um, on this kind of young tournament. In the middle, middle top, we've got Kenta and Juice Robinson, both with four points at 2-1. and one. Middle bottom, we've got... Five competitors with two points. So a lot of guys still in the hunt here. So Hiroshi Tanahashi, Zack Sabre Jr., Evil, Hiroki Goto, and Yoshihashi, all at two points. So that's one and two on the record. And then at the bottom, we've got Sonata. Sonata uh, winless through his first three matches, 0-3, but coming into his first of, uh, I believe, two main events on the tournament tonight with facing, you know, top of the, top of the heap, Tetsuya Naito. Some of the details in the statistics are pretty disparate here. So at the top, we've got Tetsuya Naito and Toriano, like I said, both with six points, but they have gotten there in completely different ways. So uh, Tetsuya Naito, average match length of 25.54, longest in the tournament so far, total match length of an hour, 17 minutes and 42 seconds through just the three matches. Toriano, on the other hand, Almost an hour less than Tetsuya Naito to get his three wins. 18 minutes total ring time, so 6.01 on the average there. As I peek through the rest of the data, nothing super stand out here. Um, nothing too too wild, honestly. Um, a couple of the matchups tonight feature uh, some very similar results to date, which we will talk about as we run down the card. So let's get into that. The main event from Niigata will feature the second of two intra-faction Civil War-style matches. 
This one, between Los Ingobernables de Japón heavyweights, IWGP heavyweight, and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito versus Sonata. Naito and Sonata entered this match on different ends of the statistical spectrum in almost all categories, and while Naito may be able to be a little tranquilo at this point in the tournament with his 3-0 record, Sonata can hardly afford his fourth loss in a row to begin the tournament. Sonata may find extra motivation as his first of two main events in this year's tournament happens in his hometown, Nagata. Since arriving in NJPW, Sonata is 3-1 in his hometown. He first defeated Toriano in the 2017 G1 Climax, he defeated Kota Ibushi in the 2018 G1 Climax, and he defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi in the New Japan Cup 2019 semifinals, all in this same building. The finals of that tournament were also in Niigata, where Sonata fell to Kazuchika Okada in 3307, unable to complete his Cinderella story in his hometown. Sonata looks to turn around his 2020 G1 Climax with a win over LIJ leader and IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito. Naito looks to continue his success in, in main event matches in this tournament. This will be his fourth straight event at the top of the card. He only has one more main event booked for the remainder of the tournament on October 11th in Aichi against Evil. Naito and Sonata enter on different ends of the statistical spectrum. In the simplest metric, wins and losses, Naito 3-0 with those six points, while Sonata is 0-3, still sitting on that goose egg. Sonata should enter his match with Naito relatively fresh. Aside from the, we'll say, efficient Toriano, Sonata has the shortest total match length so far in this year's tournament. His 32-34 lands at just 41% of Tetsuya Naito's 1 hour, 17 minutes, and 42 seconds tournament to date. If somehow it holds up, Tetsuya Naito's average match length of 25-54 would be the fifth would be almost five minutes longer than Kazuchika Okada's tournament record average of 21.02. Sonata is not really a candidate to, to help Naito, regardless of this year's tournament uh, results. When Sonata is in the main event, he does tend to go long. As many remember, Sonata has participated in the longest G1 Climax block match to ever go to a finish, his defeat of Kazuchika Okada in 29.47 during last year's tournament. Uh, Naito's 1 hour, 17 minutes, and 42 seconds is the longest total match length in the entire tournament so far, so also including the A block. Next closest in the stamina metric is Jay White at 1 hour, 17 minutes, and 30 seconds, but Jay White has already participated in his fourth match. If we take a look down to just 2020 results so far, Tetsuya Naito's 875 winning percentage is the best in New Japan in 2020. Toriyano and Taiji Ishimori are hot on his heels at 857. So Yano and Ishimori at 6 and 1. Naito 7 and 1 on the year. His only loss, his IWGP Heavyweight Championship match to Evil at Dominion. Even after his shorter victory over Hiroki Goto on Tuesday night, Naito's average uh, average match length for the year is still a grueling 30 minutes and 56 seconds almost nine and a half minutes longer than Kazuchika Okada's second place results in this metric. Naito and Sonata have faced each other once before. Uh, that was in the 2018 G1 Climax in Yokohama. Naito has never lost to another member of Los Ingobernables de Japón in the G1. He defeated Sonata, Shingo Takagi, and Evil all once while they were aligned with the faction. So this will be his first time fighting someone for a second time. So that's the main event tonight. That should be a, a pretty pretty awesome match. Looking forward to some really heavy competition. Sonata clearly is going to be hungry to, to get that win. And Naito uh, certainly wants to protect his lead at the top of the block. We can expect these guys to probably have an honorable fight because they, they are still aligned with each other in the same group. But um, when it comes to the G1 all bets are off when it comes to, you know, just having a good, a good, healthy match. So I'm excited to see what happens here. Second match down the card is Kenta versus Evil. Kenta coming in with four points. Evil coming in with two. 
The semi-main event will feature the first intrafaction Civil War match of the evening as Bullet Club's two newest members, Kenta and Evil, will face off in an attempt to establish their placement behind the kind of assumed now leader, Jay White, in the faction. Kenta used the end of last year's G1 Climax to turn on Katsuura Shibata and make a statement that he was aligned with the nefarious faction Bullet Club. At that point, Kenta had lost five straight G1 Climax matches, ending his first G1 at eight points after a, after a pretty hot start. Well, a really hot start, four, four wins in a row. Kenta has seemingly righted his ship in regards to G1 performance. He isn't coming out of the gates quite as hot as he did last year, but he's certainly positioned pretty well to do all right in this year's tournament, coming out at 2-1 and one so far. Evil's fortunes have turned south since losing the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championships back to Tetsuya Naito at Summer Struggle in Jingu. At that point, he had rattled off seven straight victories through the New Japan Cup and his IWGP Heavyweight Championship matches. Since then, he's 1-2, suffering losses already in this tournament to Zack Sabre Jr. and Toriano. Evil looks to stay above 500 in his G1 career. He's currently sitting at 20-19. and 19. And while Kenta looks to advance past that 500 point, as he is now 6-6 six and six through his first tournament and a half. Well, tournament and a third, if we're being really technical. In 2020, Evil's eight victories in New Japan are the second most, uh, behind only Kazuchika Okada's 10. Evil's average winning match length of 22-44 is second highest in New Japan, behind only Tetsuya Naito's 29-55. That average... Is uh, it's definitely drawn up by his 3801 victory over Tetsuya Naito in their match at Dominion. Uh, when it comes to head to head, Kenta's victory over Evil last year was their only match. It was also Kenta's last G1 victory um, before this year's tournament. So after he lost to Evil, or sorry, after he defeated Evil, he lost five in a row. It'll be fascinating to see what. Kenta and Evil bring to the table in their match against each other now that they're both aligned with Bullet Club. Evil has continued to use, uh, we'll say, nefarious means to try to drive victory, and uh, Kenta has actually been wrestling pretty clean. So I I don't anticipate that will change. Kenta doesn't typically have anyone uh, coming out to the ring with him, whereas Evil still has Dick Togo and any number of, of, you know, (laughs) pardon the pun, evil plans to drive, uh, you know, his attempts at victory so far in this tournament. So I think, you know, I'm hopeful that we see Kenta continue to wrestle clean and try to establish um, dominance as he seems to be on a hotter streak right now over, uh, over evil. Third down the card, we'll have Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Yoshihashi. Hiroshi Tanahashi coming in with two points and Yoshihashi also coming in with two points. Yoshihashi looks to gain his first career victory over Hiroshi Tanahashi in the third match down the card. Both competitors began their tournaments 0-2 in G1 Climax 30, but they were each able to get on the board at Cork and Hall just two nights ago. Tanahashi and Yoshihashi entered their match statistically very even. Only 14 seconds separate them in total ring time. Their records are the same, and only a minute separates their average winning match length. Uh, There is quite the disparity between their longest loss, so Tanahashi's night one loss to Tetsuya Naito was the second longest match of the tournament thus far at 27-16. Yoshihashi's longest match of the tournament thus far landed at 17-21. That was his night four loss to Evil. In regards to G1 Climax history, uh, regardless of this year's results so far, these two remain on two ends of the G1 Climax results spectrum. Hiroshi Tanahashi's 84 victories are still the most in G1 Climax history. They probably will be for a very long time. While Yoshihashi's 300 winning percentage is the second lowest among modern G1 competitors. Only Tomaki Honma's 143 is lower. When we take a peek at 2020 singles results so far, it's a little surprising that Hiroshi Tanahashi is the one with the 333 winning percentage at 2 and 4. While Yoshihashi is is five and four, with his biggest victory to date just happening just the other night with his his win over Sonata. 
Tanahashi and Yoshihashi have met three times in the past, and Tanahashi has been successful in all three. Uh, two of their previous contests have been in G1 tournaments. That was in 2017 and 2018. Their previous matchup was all the way back in 2013 on the road to Tokyo Dome. The second tournament match on the card will be Hiroki Goto versus Zack Sabre Jr. They're both coming into this match with two points. So still still in the hunt for both these guys. I'm sure they both want to um, balance their record at one and two, or at, at sorry, at two and two instead of going one and three. Goto and ZSJ have shared pretty similar paths at this point in the tournament. They have each suffered a loss to IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito, and they have both fallen to Kenta as well. They each enter their contest with each other with one victory. Goto defeated Sonata, and Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Evil, uh, his, his win on the first night of B-Block competition. Their records may be the same at 1 and 2, but Goto has been a much more efficient with his ring time, averaging almost 3 minutes shorter than Sabre to land at the same result. That's something that Tetsuya Naito even called out in his post-match interview just the other night. Uh, Goto and ZSJ have the same 1 and 2 record thus far in this year's G1, and while Hiroki Goto has significantly more G1 experience with uh, well over 100 matches, Um, they both land at the exactly the same all-time winning percentage at just over 500. They're at, they're both at 533. In 2020, they both have three wins. Hiroki Goto has four losses. Zack Sabre Jr. has three. And Goto and Zack Sabre Jr. have faced each other four times in the past, twice in the G1. They are two and two all-time with Hiroki Goto winning their first two matches, including a never openweight championship defense at Sakura Genesis 2017 and a G1 Climax 27 match. As with many competitors, Goto fell to Zack Sabre Jr. in 2018 in both a G1 Climax match and on Zack's home turf at the Rev Pro New Japan Global Wars. So these two are poised to position themselves for a, a push to, to land themselves uh, closer to the top of the block here if they can even themselves out at 500. Uh, you can imagine that they will both be fighting hard to not fall further into that hole. And believe it or not, the match on the card with the most combined block points accumulated will be the first tournament match of the evening, a meeting between two quick starters in this year's G1, Juice Robinson and perennial 8-point finisher, Toriano. Juice Robinson enters this match with four points. Toriano enters with a perfect 3-0 record, so with six. So that's a total of 10, which is the most on the card. So uh, strange that the, the card with the most successful... Com- or, sorry, strange that the match with the most successful competitors is happening first, but the cards are made early. We never really know how things are going to land. There's not a ton to read into with this year's data points, Juice Robinson's total match length of 47-14 is nearly three times the 1804 it has taken Toriano to go undefeated through three matches. You can't say Toriano doesn't value his own time. He clearly does. He doesn't need a ton of time to figure out what's going to happen when he gets in the ring with literally any competitor under, under the sun. So, uh, it, with G1 Climax history, though, over the last 10 G1 Climax tournaments, Toriano has averaged 8 points, never finishing with less than 6, so that's, his, that's where he's at right now, at, but never finishing with more than 10. He is, of course, on pace for 18 in this year's tournament if he continues uh, down the path he's on. Juice Robinson has averaged a record under 500 in his first three tournaments, uh, landing with an average of... Uh, just over seven points. In 2020, Toriano's 857 winning percentage is second best in New Japan, behind only Tetsuya Naito's 875. Juice Robinson and Toriano have faced each other three times, each in the last three G1 Climax tournaments, so uh, every G1 that Juice Robinson has participated in. Juice has won all three of those matches, uh, with only one match passing the four-and-a-half-minute mark. Uh, that was their 2018 match at 8 minutes and 28 seconds. So that's all I've got for you today. Uh, kind of a quick preview, but we've we've gone through all five of the G1 B Block matches on the October 1st card from Niigata. After this card, the tournament takes three days off and will return on Monday, October 5th from Kagawa. 
with a main event of Kota Ibushi versus Will Ospreay, and another chapter in the story between Kazuchika Okada and Minoru Suzuki. I'll be back sometime, likely with a little bit more lead time before that event with my preview for that. This is my chance, everyone. This is my chance to get ahead of this tournament as uh, starting Monday, we've got six events in seven days. Um, of course, you can find this preview in written form at sportofprowrestling.com or voicesofwrestling.com, and you can give me a follow on Twitter at the Chris Samsa to interact with me during the G1. I appreciate you giving me a listen, and I will see you next time on the Sport of Pro Wrestling Podcast.